Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, we're going to start our session now and be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your neck head straight in one line and gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound. So while you're focusing to the sound mentally, relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our session, it is important yourself mentally prepare. So that mental preparation and in day-to-day -day life, you, even when you have your own time to practice meditation, always remember, the very first thing brings some value to your practice and appreciate yourself. So especially, and you come to practice this, not by mistake. Even in the sansaric journey, maybe you had a habit or even in this very lifetime, somehow you found this profitable practice to yourself. So remember that yourself and remind it because if you look very carefully in this very moment, people doing many other activities and not profitable for anyone. So, but you, in this very moment you sitting, so it is not happened by mistake, so then yourself, while you practice in, if your mind become busy, or if your mind go here and there, and if you feel kind of like uh, you, are, you are physically more tired, mentally more tired, like that way. Just imagine, so bring the value to yourself and uplift to your practice knowingly that you're doing something great for you. So with that, mainly we practice tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation. So the reason why we practice this both, because our main purpose is going to vipassana. But, but as ordinary people, mostly for us, Without tranquility state, you cannot go into the vipassana level of practice. Without tranquility state, without sharp and clear usable mind, undisturbed mind, you cannot analyze. You cannot recognize. You cannot go deeper. So that's why mainly as foundation, we keep tranquility state. But when it comes to tranquility state, the very nature of the tranquility state, mostly you settle down, but, but the mind not going to be sharp there. 
why it always find a place to settle down. That's why. It's kind of like uh, you holding something and moving. Like uh, as example in water, sometimes you can hold the boat and when the boat move, then you move. And uh, so you are in bicycle and if you hold a kind of like a vehicle, then what will happen when the vehicle move, you move with that. You no need to paddle. So kind of like a tra when it comes to tranquility state, it's not going to sharp your awareness. But it is very necessary to calm down the mind in the first level. So once you calm down the mind, and then we go to the, the vipassana, analytical meditation. So when it comes to that uh, tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation, there are uh, this both meditation interconnected and we use this both. You can practice tranquility meditation without vipassana. But you cannot practice vipassana without tranquility meditation. So then for, for this both meditation techniques, there are three principles, method that you always have to use. One is called atapi. So atapi means diligence. You become very careful with the, the mental object. Atapi, diligence. So whatever the mental object, you become very careful with it. And regarding the practice, and it come to the posture also, when it come to tranquility state. Another thing is Sampajanya. Sampajanya means clear comprehension. So when it come to this clear comprehension, you have to be very clear with your physical, mental experience in this very moment. Not whatever happened in the past or in the future. So as example, it's like this, okay? So you hit your arm yesterday. And now you have little pain here. And now that pain indicated, so you, you feel when you start to practice meditation, you start to feel the pain. So the pain not going to come itself mostly. It come with that whatever happened yesterday. So recognizing pain, something, but you connected to the memory related to that pain is different. So clear comprehension means you're not going to go to the yesterday whatever happened. In this very moment, you separate that you are the pain from the yesterday memory and observe it separately. So like that, whatever come to this moment, and then in that very moment, you have to be. So you sit for meditation. And then somebody open the door or go and open refrigerator or start to do something, open the tap or doing something. And then go. Now you ask. So in that very moment, you recognize. So that is... In that very moment, whatever you experience, that is the moment of experience. And then once it go, you become to a very clear moment. In that very clear moment also, if you think about what happened, that is not the clear comprehension. So now you are in very clear, no one disturbing, even one second. So you come to that moment. So like that moment by moment in that very moment, in the present moment, you recognizing the especially with the, the mental and physical condition and inside what is going on, not outside. 
If you get disturbed out of something, you don't focus to outside, you focus to inside and see yourself. And while, once you see that whatever the, the, the unhappiness or the disappointed mind going to go away. So then remember the first one, diligence and carefully. That means you become very clear with the primary mental object. And then clear comprehension. That means you become very clear with the present moment of the experience, not even before we start whatever, whatever we told, that I told in the beginning is not now in this very moment. So like that, you go with the moment by moment, moment by moment, where while you're practicing meditation. And then the, uh, the third one, sati, is called mindfulness. So that means your intention always should be with the attention. And so the attention means that your primary mental observing the inhalation, exhalation. And one point, so you stay in one point and develop the clarity in the eye and settle down with it. So that is mindfulness. So, and you completely, if you practice moment by moment, moment by moment with these three qualities, you are tranquility state going to become more sharp and clear and also that will help you uh, to help you to your uh, vipassana meditation also so with that we are going to start our meditation so in the beginning we practice tranquility meditation observing the inhalation exhalation so that is our main master technique to practice tranquility state. So then in day-to-day -day life, when you have time, try to, to practice and master yourself. So you bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. And sometimes right away, you cannot maybe get into the exact point. So that's why you have to do a little experiment and you have to wait a little bit. And deeply observing, inhaling, exhaling three, times and you recognize the where exactly you can get the sensation. Maybe you take a few minutes. So once you recognize that, you follow the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation without visualizing, dreaming or without commenting or arguing with it, without making anything happen the way you want. Just allow simply naturally happen to your inhalation, exhalation. So once it happened, recognize this is inhalation and this is exhalation. So while you recognizing that what will happen, your mind, body, breathing start to slowly settle down. And then you're going to be very clear with the, the inhalation, exhalation. And then a little bit more bring more focus and attention and then observe the beginning, middle, end of the inhalation, exhalation. This may observe entire breath body. And while you're observing that, you will see some inhalation, exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. It is not anybody doing it. It's just happening itself. So like that, you go with the details following inhalation, exhalation. And once the mind settled down there, your body, your breathing, your mind start to work as one in tranquility state. So whatever come to your mind, don't go with it. Just stay simply with the sensation. And when it comes to vipassana, so the vipassana meditation means recognizing, observing, analyzing your inner experience. Then again, we go to the clear comprehension. So the clear comprehension means with your body and mind, what is going on? You recognizing that. So when it comes to that, as our body, as our mind, as our life, we take these five aggregates. Form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition. So 
recognizing these all five things called vipassana but getting to these five aggregates there are four meditation techniques kayaanupassana contemplating the body vedanaanupassana contemplating the pain chittaanupassana contemplating the mind and dhammaanupassana contemplating the the nature this all related to the body it's kind of like a, you get four tools to analyze all these five aggregates somehow you get into the five aggregates in that five aggregates you observe when you go deeper you observe its reality when you observe the reality of five aggregates you recognizing impermanent always change it it doesn't matter you go with the the contemplating the body contemplating the pain contemplating the thoughts contemplating the dhamma or the nature natural process of the body in in this four ways if you analyze whatever the way if you get into the five aggregates you will see the change that is the bottom line so once you see the change because of the change you will recognize that whatever you feel as a joy or the pleasure or anything unpleasant pleasant unpleasant or anything that everything change pleasant unpleasant neutral that all change so that unsatisfactory nature why it happen it happened because of the the change and then if something change if something ha has the unsatisfactory nature if there is no self if there is a self then it should hold it to and with without changing or it should maintain and the way it want but we cannot what we cannot what the meaning of we five aggregates form feeling sensation formation recognition so mainly when you do this forget your name and forget your physical form that is very important kind of like observe with the bird i view yourself so your entire system whatever experience take as a dharma or the part of the nature so don't observe with the self centered mind get out of that self centered mind observe as a part of the nature and what you observe form feeling sensation formation recognition you cannot maybe cannot catch all these five but still you can get the sensation or you can get the the recognition what you recognize moment by moment moment by moment change so you go with it without hold it to any experience so in the vipassana you get out of all the techniques or the patterns you become kind of like a bird in the sky to any direction that bird can fly it is just not only the forward any direction so keep the mind like that in prayer prayer and you have to develop the ability to getting to the meditation without any resistance with the fully calmness but at the same time it is not you keep a very lethargic lazy mind no you have the very clear mind with that clear mind you observe without too much pushing and holding tightening your mind so keep that comfort in you and always remember when you get into the meditation it is not you separate from your day to day life oh i practice meditation i have to do this way i have to do that way no this is a part of life just take it as normal practice don't categorize yourself you are practicing meditation you are a separate separate person now you practice meditation then you have to be different no just be simply who you are be like how the duck get into the water 
the same like with that comfort you have to get into the the especially when it come to vipassana no, don't hold any resistance but that doesn't mean you become completely lost no you have the intention we you have you become very careful and you become very clear with your in a experience and at the same time you keep the mindfulness within yourself so with that you get into that and you observe form feeling sensation formations recognition just getting to the the uh, the feeling very easy and you can find it and then observe how it change don't interfere with any change just see the change and recognize how that because of that change how the feelings change and then you will recognize this all happening because of the no self and why the change happen the change happen because of the four elements because this anything is not belong to us this everything belong to the the four element so the very nature of the four element always changing and moving so then yourself just watch it and just keep tracking and keep uh, recognizing that change so we going to practice a little bit your right palm on your left and neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture and keep your back straight and neck get straight in one line So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times yourself and say Sopateva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also, think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation, and then later observe the form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition with unsatisfaction, change, and selflessness. So deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation in front of your nose and your upper lip area. So allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen naturally. And when it happens, recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation.
So focus your mind to the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation. If your mind go here and there, don't worry about it. Just keep your attention to the sensation. Time to time you can observe the posture and see how you, are, you hold your body. And follow the entire continuation of the inhalation exhalation knowingly this is the beginning this is the middle this is the end of the inhalation or exhalation watch entire breath body this is rising this is falling Also, you may experience some inhalation, exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize.
and drop all the details related to the sensation, inhalation, exhalation, like that. Just keep follow the sensation and recognize the change. So whatever experience come to you, don't name it, don't categorize, don't label. Just see only the change and unsatisfactory nature and selflessness related to that change. Recognize carefully. Be with only your physical, mental experience. Don't go beyond it. Bring your attention to your body. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound 
village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside, little by little try to expand the capacity. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself 
May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Se sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, today, 1st of December, this, uh, that we are getting closer to the end, uh, end of this year, 2020. This is a historical year and uh, you all are part of that history. And at the same time, personally for yourself. And this is a very good time period to cultivate your profitable skills and, uh, and clear your blueprint and uh, make a clear path for yourself. Because we used to be so busy with a lot of other activities. But this time period gave us a kind of like a rest and uh, gave us a kind of like a space and even yourself whatever you thought about the life and you understand it is not like that see that how the things change so then uh, always remember the most important thing is that to develop awareness mindfulness because when you have the, the profitable skill to develop the mindfulness, the whatever the situation come, and according to that situation, you, you can get the best out of it. So that is how you have to develop the life. Don't get addicted to pattern or the method, even the comfort, even everything go perfect. Don't get addicted to that. Always remember yourself to go with the, the necessary conditions, things in that moment. Only thing is develop the mindfulness. Keep the clarity, sharpness and keep the undisturbed mind. That is the most important part. Even imagine that if you gain the world that the way you wish to become more successful and mostly nowadays this young generation their dream is to become famous getting more views from youtube or the facebook uh, or getting more followers from the instagram so that is that is became their life even you reach to that millionaire so followers then what will happen if you develop, if you don't develop this undisturbed mind, and you you going to have a very miserable life, then what will happen to all the millionaires who ever follow you? So then always remember and develop your in day-to-day -day life, especially within your capacity. Always develop the, the clarity. Why? Because life is like a package. It comes to us. When we born to this life, it's kind of like a package that everything mix. You know, it's kind of like a salad. Everything mix. 
it's nothing wrong but there are a few qualities that in this mix salad in your life that you gain when you born to this world so mostly it kind of like a mud so it's full of things it full of is like this painful playful eventful needful awful lustful watchful hateful blameful doubtful frightful fearful sinful gainful hopeful harmful hurtful fanciful so this kind of mud we gain in this life and if you have the mindful life what will happen you able to transform this all the muds to something value it's like uh, look that the that the, the clay pot so the clay it's coming from mud but what there is a way there is a skill you can transform it to ornament or kind of like a cup and even then using that clay cup you can drink water you can keep the water and you can put some valuable things and once you do all of the 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 clay you can build houses so you you have power to transform that so that is the quality that you have to do so this all the muds come like a current of emotions is a emotions current we are all going to have this as a package and the thing is when you develop the mindfulness if you aware when you become very clear when you develop the mindfulness as a profitable skill and when you recognize in day to day life rather than complaining fighting with rather than resisting you develop art this all the the mud you can transform it like this so when you have the mindfulness you can transform painful life to joyful life playful life to meaningful life eventful life to helpful life and needful life to helpful life and awful life to wonderful life and lustful life to cheerful life and watchful life to peaceful life hateful life to merciful life and blameful life to thankful life and uh, doubtful life to skillful life and frightful life to careful life fearful life to powerful life gainful life to graceful life and hopeful life to grateful life sinful life to blissful life and harmful life to lawful life hurtful life to useful life fanciful life to beautiful life so this this all you cannot separate it you cannot take one thing only good side and throw away the bad this all going to be with us so then what the skill that you have to develop whatever the situation come then always remember take it as a opportunity use it don't go away no matter what maybe it is bad difficult hard take it when you accept it in that acceptance itself you developing a very friendly environment so once you have that friendly environment it is very easy for you to go through it um, why because mostly this everything is kind of like a mental qualities remember that it is not the outside it's mostly that what we create our 
mental image regarding situations become more stronger than outside situations. So that's why when you develop the profitable skill to transform whatever the, the, the situation to better situation and you develop it. So for that, I'll give a story. And most of you know the book Ramayana. In that Ramayana, there are mainly three characters. Rama, Sita and Ravana. So this Sita, her father called King Janaka. This King Janaka had everything. He had a very luxurious life and no one came against him. Everything peaceful, whatever he wished, he got. And then one day there was a friend came and asked, and at the same time, he had the wisdom, knowledge. And it's kind of like he attained to the jhana. It's kind of like a brahma jhana. So he, even he had the capacity to, to, to go to the brahma world. The mentally, he developed high mental powers. So materially, he became so successful. And then spiritually also, he became so successful. And he had a very good life and no enemies. That is very difficult because when you are in power, how possible there is no enemy? Because when you are getting to the power, the very first thing that you create some enemies. So then there was a friend came to King Janaka and asked, how wonderful your life. And I wonder, how you get this? How you how you have this all, and you are you have this uh, kingdom, and no one against you, and you have the 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 most beautiful and respectful this uh, daughter, Sita, and uh, then the the son-in-law, the Rama, the one of the most powerful person, and uh, you are spiritually develop your life. How you get this everything? So then the, the King Janaka was thinking and told, that is a beautiful question. Even I don't know how I got this. And that day with that, you know, the thought in his mind, how I get this? Because everybody can, the other people cannot get it. Why? It's come to only me. Then with that thought, he went to sleep. So then what happened at night? He saw a dream. In that dream, he saw somebody came to him and whispered and told, tomorrow early morning, wake up and start to walk towards the north. And then you will meet the sunset. In the oh, and that sunset, you will see there is a sannyasi or yogi or rishi sitting under a tree and eating leaves, tree leaves. So you ask him, he will give the answer. So that, that somebody appeared in dream and told that. So the king Janaka wake up early in the morning and he got, he he remembered somebody told what he did. He jump out of the bed and start to walk to walk towards north. And he went, you no, know, the whole day walking, walking, and then almost the the is getting to dark. And he saw in that sunset, he saw there was a yogi under the tree eating tree leaves. Oh, see, oh, here, the guy, this is the guy I want. And he went. When he, when the King Janaka come closer, this yogi told, telling his name, oh, King Janaka, I know why you came here. I know the answer, but I'm not going to tell you. So you rest. 
rest here today with me. And then they both rested that night. And then early morning, this Rishi told, this yogi told to him, you go walk towards north until you get meet the sunset. So by that time, you will see there is a person eating ashes. And then ask that person and he will give the answer. So then what happened? Early morning, no choice. He didn't argue with him because, you know, by appearing, when he tell his, the, his name and told, oh, I know why you came. And then he, know, he knew that everything worked. So Jan King Janaka knew he going to get the answer. Why he received this everything? So then he walked. And by the sunset, what happened? He saw a person eating ashes. And he went, his knew this is the person. And he went and by appearing, same like uh, what happened yesterday. This guy told, oh, King Janaka. I know why you come here. I know the answer. But you are so tired today. Just rest with me. And then the, by the morning, he told, you keep walking. And by the sunset, you will come to a village. In the middle of that village, there is a, the, the millionaire. In that house, there is a baby born today. So by the evening, that boy going to die, newly born baby. So you go there and then go to that baby and ask that baby, that baby will give the answer. So the King Janaka, now he knows this, the, how this, you know, this, this answer coming closer and without arguing, without, you know, that the, uh, going backward, you know, this working. So he went next day, early morning, went. And he went to the village. In that village, everyone, you know, celebrating and happy. And then he asked, what the reason? No, today our, the, the most richest man in this village, he got a baby. And then the, the king general, can I go there? And he went to the the house. And then by appearing that people knew this King Janaka and they told, oh, King Janaka, please bless our baby. Then King Janaka told, can I privately, you know, personally talk to this baby? Then uh, that millionaire told, of course, you know, you are the king. Why not? Just please bless our baby. And go whatever you want to, you know, do uh, that the talk with the baby. Because the newly born baby, then they didn't believe this baby going to talk. And then he went to this baby. And by appearing, this baby looked at the King Janaka and told, Oh, King Janaka, after a long time, I know why you came here. And I'm going to give you the answer. You know, so listen this very carefully. This is the baby told to King Janaka. Now you know the story. The King Janaka was the most, you know, successful in the human history. And he was one of the most successful king. Why? No any enemy. He had everything, not even in the mat materially, spiritually, he was successful. You know, so that is what most of our people missing. We become physically successful, materially successful, but spiritually zero. But the, that is why King Janaka is the highest. So somehow, then this baby told, you know, you were in a family long, long time ago, in a very poor family. And uh, you had the mother and the father passed away. So mother used to take care of you and your brother, second brother, and the third brother and you. You are the last in the family. And uh, somehow what happened, there was a time, three days, our mother couldn't find any food. 
this mother couldn't find any food for three days. Just imagine, three days, mother with these poor children, how difficult it is. If you had a life like that, you know, poor life, you know, we, we, we experience it in our life, you know. We ex even though we, we, we have this here today, you know, the McDonald, you know, these kind of things around us, we had a life. You know, the hunger, we know the, the very nature of the hunger. So this little boy, the newly born baby telling to King Danaka. And uh, so the mother was going and begging and looking for food, but she couldn't find food. But somehow she found little bit, you know, food. And it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a, uh, tortilla, you know, in, in, in India it called chapati, you know, she found poor chapatis, you know, it's a, in here it's like tortilla, poor tortillas, it's like roti. And then she bought it and she gave it to these poor children and even she couldn't have anything. And while he's serving to the children, what happened? Suddenly, very old person appeared. It's like a, you know, old man, like a beggar, but somehow came to this house. So then whoever come to the house, at that time, they used to take that person as a visitor. You know, it doesn't matter good or bad or thief or, you know, friend or anybody whoever come to the house that they become a visitor that's the even if you look at the 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 very connotation of the the visitor that you will find the history so somehow so in eastern tradition is if there is a visitor come that we have to take care of the visitor so then this very old man was so hungry and he told, I need something to eat. So then the mother, mother told, I don't have any food. After three days, today is the only day I found little bit food. I already gave it to this, my children. So go and try and ask from children. If they're willing to give, I'm okay with that. So then, the, then he went to the elder person. And told, I am so hungry. So the tradition and the culture is the, when the visitor come giving the food. So what happened? The elder told, how I can give this? After three days, I just got this. I am so hungry. If I give this to you, what will happen? I will eat. I have to eat three leaves. You know, if I give it to you, I have to eat three leaves. He just stole it. And then he went to the, the second son and asked, I'm so hungry. Can you give it? Can you give some food? And he told, how I can give this? If I give this to you, do you think I should eat uh, ashes? So he didn't give. And then he went to the third person, son and then asked, can you give a little bit food for me? And this son told, if I give this to you, I will die. And then by appearing to the fourth son, the youngest son, even before he asked, that little boy gave his chapati, his tortilla, his roti to this elder with his both hands with the respect and gave, not only gave, he gave and worshipped. And then this, you know, this boy almost died and this boy, little boy telling, my brother, in this sansaric journey, your brother you met day before yesterday and he keep eating the tree leaves. And your other brother you met yesterday and uh, 
he is eating ashes i am keep dying in this sansar but you are the one who having this everything and holding this all the country and everything and be became so successful because in that very difficult hard time you sacrifice the best so that is what the reason so dear dhamma practitioners see this is the this is the human nature this is what you have to understand this is coming from you know our human history so those are the fundamental qualities that we have to develop especially remember when it come to a very difficult time in your life we all go through don't count on that when a very difficult time come even don't count on your blessings when a very difficult times come you have to count on your skills you have to count on your profitable skills and developing that and sharing it with others so do something good when you come to a very difficult time and so when you do good things and especially remember without planning suddenly when you have to do something that is kind of like a best opportunity for you don't miss that opportunity so now you hear this after long time you know you hear this dharma that hold this world as a beautiful place and so then remember from today in this sansaric journey anywhere you go so whatever you hold it to your mind knowingly or unknowingly consciously or unconsciously remember it going to go with you that's why he was thinking oh i going to eat three leaves and then he eat the three leaves oh i going to eat ashes oh he going to you know he is eating ashes oh do you think i going to i have to die and that boy keep dying and sometimes in life we also say like that in day to day life unconsciously for some other you know reasons so be very careful and always keep the clarity in your mind purify your heart it's like cleaning your house once a while you clean everything and if there is important you bring back so like that without any condition without any limit you know, clean your heart this is a good time for you you know we have seen what is this life and you experience and you went through hell and you will go through heaven and you have your personal experience you know what is life now it is not the life that what you see on movies what you hear through songs and what is not in novels now you know that so recognize that and with that recognition come to very clear understanding keep your mind clear, clear and pure that is the important part and other thing is when you have to do something for especially for others and especially for elders you know and especially for children sick people you know difficult people if there is somebody need something so like that and do it maybe it is hard for you this that is maybe the you know end of you do it why because that is we are you are new beginning going to happen but we hold it to that what we think or whatever our mind we going to go with it so it is up to you it is your choice and make a good choice so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana 
सभीतो वज्जंतु सब रोगो विनसतु माते भवतंतरायु सुखी दीगायुको भव इत्तावता च अम्मी संपदं पुण्य संपदं सबे देवा अनुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे भूता अनुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्ता अनुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया इदं मे पुण्य कमंगा सवक्या वांगो तु सब दुखा पमंत तु ब्लेस